In 1902, a few years before Japan's colonization of Korea, a group of 100 Koreans hopped on a boat bound for Hawaii in pursuit and the promise of a new life. And that was the very first large-scale immigration to a foreign country in Korea's history. So on today's Zoom In segment, we've invited a special guest who tells the story of Korean immigration to the U.S. through her documentaries. Award-winning producer Jin Young Lee Won now joins us on the line. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I guess I um, say aloha I'm, I'm talking from Hawaii, uh, Aloha State. All right. Uh, just in case our listeners haven't heard about your acclaimed documentary, could you first introduce uh, Words of Wisdom from the Rainbow State? Yes, Words of Wisdom from the Rainbow State. Um, that's my first film title. It delves into the lives of very early Korean immigrants um, in Hawaii, highlighting pioneers such as Valor Moon, who is the child of grandson, actually, of the very first people who came to Hawaii in the first boat, you know, Gaelic, mm-hmm. and Harry Kim, who was the first mayor of the United States as a Korean descendant, also a son of Picture Bride, um, who is among the like, first Korean immigrant group, and showcasing their parents' dedication and their dedication, um, which has left a lasting impact on Hawaii culture. Mm-hmm. It serves as a you know, tribute to the resilience and contributions of these pioneers and and the entire complete six part series has been broadcast worldwide via um, the Arirang network actually and is currently accessible for free on YouTube. So simply search for Words of Wisdom from the Rainbow State mm. on YouTube or visit our website, the rainbowworld.com if you wanna watch um, the full episode. Okay, so uh, that's readily available for anyone of our listeners who are interested. Words of wisdom from the Rainbow State. Uh, just in your brief introduction, Chin Young, uh, I can take away maybe of the universality of immigration to the United States, but it is a very specific story. So what do you think were the key elements that capture the global judges and the audience's attention? Yeah, um, that's a great question. When I think the immigrant experience is a universal thing that transcends borders and cultures, really. So these pioneer stories, like even though it's rooted in Korea, are fundamentally about a human perseverance, dreams, and the pursuit of a better life. Um, I think that resonates with people from various backgrounds. And the um, authenticity in these narratives played a significant role. Um, the Harry Kim talking about his mom is really moving and, mm. you know, it's just is talking about his dad and his grandfather. Um, this unfiltered human grit actually um, portrayed by these pioneers made the stories not just compelling, but also very genuine, I think. Mm. Uh, the tough circumstances and the stories of the first generation immigrants, uh, it, it seems that you've found your topic that is clearly close to your heart because your second documentary, The Songs of Love from Hawaii, mm. Uh, it, it also mm. encapsulates the history of Korean Americans in the U.S., but this time using music, award-winning violinists, a familiar yeah. face for the Korean audience. Richard Yong Jae O'Neill is part of the project. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Right. Yeah, you know, my goal, like, like from the very beginning of this production, when I was um, creating Words of Wisdom, was to reach as many as as many pos- I mean, as many people as possible, because um, I was really moved by this Korean immigrant story. But I was surprised that not many people actually um, know. Like around my, like friends I around myself. Like I grew up in Korea, but I never knew that there were so much um, sacrifices that were mm. made um, by those first Korean immigrants who went to Korea. So I just wanted to see. I was always wondering, you know, what the best ways to reach like, like a wider audience. And um, so for the words of wisdom, I used both Korean and English language within the film, but they didn't feel, thin, um, they didn't feel sufficient. So I turned to a universal language, which is music, mm-hmm. as you said. And The Songs of Love was born. It's a film weaving three unique stories of Korean diaspora through music. And like you said, you know, collaborating with world-renowned musicians like Richard Young Jae O'Neill, like Kian and mm-hmm. Kiola Beamer. And it's incredible that I think. Young, we did an immigration special here at Arirang Radio. And until that uh, short documentary was made, I didn't realize the sacrifices of the first generation immigrants either. Although I was mm. also an immigrant that grew up in California. Maybe it was oh. different times. Um, 
Uh, nonetheless, uh, to raise awareness seems to be one of the key elements of Songs of Love from Hawaii and Words of Wisdom from the Rainbow State. And so we wanted to focus on a few stories that you bring up in Songs of Love from Hawaii, mm. the stories of the so-called mm-hmm. picture brides, as well as Korean immigrants mm. collecting funds for independence fighters. Can you share us details mm-hmm. of those stories? Right. Um, yeah. So Songs of Love has um, three independent stories within the film. So it's like a, I mean, in Korean, we say omniverse yongwa, but it's like a musical, and you know, three different stories in one feature film. And the second one called Harmony's Breath Ball um, is about a picture bride. It's based on the true story whose name is um, A. Mok Seon. And she came to Hawaii at the age of 17 as a picture bride. I don't know if all listeners know, um, are aware of Picture Bride, but they are incredibly like courageous women who played a vital role in shaping the Korean American community. Mm. And these were women who entered into arranged marriage with Korean men living in the United States early 1900s, often based on photographs you know, exchanged between the parties. And Imoksun came to Hawaii at the age of 17, and and her life story is just very, you know, very moving. And it's a compelling narrative, really, written by her grandson, Gary Park, who's a distinguished writer. Mm. And what about those brave Korean immigrants that uh, collected funds for independence fighters? Yeah, there are part where, like, especially women, there were many, and, like, a lot of independence fighters in Hawaii mm. supported uh, funds, um, people around the world who were, you know, really fighting hard for Korea's independence. A lot of people don't know that funds came mostly from Hawaii and also from on the mainland. Mm-hmm. And um, like surprisingly, like a lot of big percentage of it are, is also from Korean women, including you know Imok Sun and other picture guys. So I wanted to um, highlight that part in, in the film. So that's one uh, important aspect of the film. Jinyoung, from what I understand, you moved to Hawaii after graduating college in Korea, after a career start yeah. right here. So what mm-hmm. motivated you to actually focus on projects that tell the story of Korea's immigration? You know, myself being an immigrant, there were many, like a lot of difficulties that I found um, mm-hmm. living in Hawaii as an immigrant than just visiting as a traveler. And, uh, you know, got, getting to know about this, um, Korean immigrant story really got me into a, um, how do I say, like it really helped me uh, find myself as a resident of, of, of Korea, um, Hawaii because, you know, when you see these um, Korean women who were brave enough to come to Hawaii like 120 years ago and still made their, you know, they had their beautiful families and even though they had such, they really had nothing, it gave me really courage and encouragement as a Korean diaspora, and I wanted to share this story with others, especially um, younger generations. Why is understanding the history of Korean immigration and preserving roots especially important, you know? Yeah, yeah. Living in Hawaii, um, I stumbled upon so many untold stories that really took a chord with me, and it wasn't just a project for me. I really wanted to share the voices and stories that shaped our community. And uh, in our you know, shared history, there's a special beauty, legacy passed down through generations. And I really firmly believe that our responsibility goes beyond really inheriting um, these stories and it extends to crafting narratives that resonate with those who will come after us. It is like our responsibility to preserve those wonderful stories that we have for, not just for us, but for the future generations. Mm. Jinyoung, you had a career as a reporter and an anchor for local broadcasters in Hawaii before returning to documentary yeah. making. So I wonder mm-hmm. what prompted that shift in the first place. And of course, a shift to filmmaking must have had its own set of challenges. What were some of the biggest difficulties? Mm. Yeah, the reason I did it was because, you know, again, I was very moved by stories. And I thought film is one of the best ways to share this story, especially with the younger generation. And that shifting to, like, moving from journalism to documentary, they're making, for sure, you know, brought about, like, uh, significant challenges. <laughs> <laughs> the transition demanded um, a shift in storytelling techniques, for example, with the, like, newfound emphasis on crafting in-depth narratives and establishing, like, real emotional connections with the audience. 
Although adapting to this change was its own set of challenges, it provided me with the opportunity to um, delve into storytelling on a deeper level. Mm. Um, and that shift was particularly impactful as we're making involved collaboration. Like I couldn't, for sure, I couldn't have done it with my own um, task. Uh, with a diverse group of talented individuals in contrast to my journalism career, which was more centered around individual efforts. Um, the mm-hmm. collaborative aspect allowed me to explore and convey stories in, in a more profound and impactful manner, I think, and adding a layer mm-hmm. of richness to my creative process. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jinyoung, if you don't mind, I want to ask you a few questions about your personal mm. life because moving to the island uh, state of Hawaii is something that many dream of, maybe even mm. for some Americans, uh, not just Koreans. And yeah. it seems that you moved to Hawaii after graduating college in Korea. So for those who lack I, the courage to execute an actual immigration to the island, what pushed you, what drove you to make the leap? Yeah, I used to work as a magazine editor all over Korea mm. and and um, life in Seoul was incredibly hectic. I'm sure you know since you live in Korea now. Mm. And uh, even though I, I really love my life in Korea, I still miss you know a lot of things about Seoul and Korea. But um, when I visited Hawaii as a like a magazine editor who was like living a busy life in Korea, I was drawn to the breathtaking you know nature of Hawaii and it's more like a relaxed pace of life. But however, the reality of living in Hawaii <laughs> as a resident, as opposed to just visiting as a traveler, was quite different. Um, and I experienced, obviously, like homesick, homesickness for a few years. And it was only when I delved into this unique immigration history that connects Korea and Hawaii that ah. I truly, truly fell in love with the island again. Um, and I realized that Hawaii is part of my ancestors' land. You know, that's why I think making it a place where I truly belong. That was something that I missed, like, in the first few years. Mm -hmm. um, You know, you feel like you don't belong, like, when you live there. Like, when you're traveling, um, it's a different. Like, when you you leave, you always look for the belongingness, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, what I was um, really missing. But then when I got to know the Korean history, Mm -hmm. I really um, got to realize that this is part of our, um, our land, in a sense. Mm. And um, in fact, my first film was The Vision from the Rainbow State, ah. revolved around this personal experience of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who are just kind of reaching for the stars and dreaming big, the reality is adjusting to a brand new life in Hawaii is it, it, tough. And I'm, mm. I'm also told by my friends who now live in Hawaii that the cost of living is high and maybe forming yeah, your relationships yeah. could be tough too. But you found your roots all the way in Hawaii. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. We, and then, you know, that's just Hawaii. Even if you live, I don't know, like Texas or like, <laughs> like, like or like China, Russia, anywhere you live, um, you will have very unique Korean diaspora history there, right? Because mm. someone, someone first moved there, like whether it's Japan, whether it's Russia or what. I strongly encourage our listeners to kind of look for that story and you will find amazing, you know, connections to yourself. Like from the story, so mm. I, um, that's one like really, um, yeah, one thing I like to share with others um, who are listening to this. It's a chance to maybe explore the less explored. It's it's interesting, Jinyoung, because I grew up in the Silicon Valley. I was surrounded by Koreans, so I had no idea what it was like to mm. adjust to maybe where there was less Koreans. But I'm also told by my friends mm. and colleagues now in Korea that tell me Koreans are everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Korean diaspora history is everywhere because right. Koreans are everywhere. Right. And that's exactly. really amazing, all those sacrifices that people who went there before us have made. Jin Young, you're making me want to explore and go into filmmaking. I don't have the skills, but I can dream. <laughs> oh, no. Like I said, you know, filmmaking, one great thing about filmmaking is uh, it, it's a collaborative work, right? Mm. Like it's not your own work. So. Mm. Just like you, I started my career as a journalist. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I think the key is to have a good story, tell a good story in your heart, I think, more than in your brain. <laughs> then you really can create a great team to tell a story that you you have with others. So I strongly encourage you to um, consider. <laughs> 
Thank you very much, Jin Young, for the vote of confidence. Uh, and finally, uh, what is your last <laughs> message to our listeners in Korea and abroad before you go? Yeah, I would like to, you know, first of all, send a sincere thank you for tuning in and expressing, um, you know, your interest in my work. And as an independent filmmaker, I believe in the power of storytelling and connecting generations and cultures. I really do believe so. So if you, and if you want to know more about our project, please visit our website and, you know, therainbowworld.com. And as a nonprofit film production, like your support always means um, the world to us, whether it's, mm. you know, whatever it is, like even sharing your own story. Um, and thanks so much for being part of our community and for considering um, supporting our journey. Thank you so much, Gina. We appreciate it. Uh-huh. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.